Hey guys, and welcome to our second episode with a podcast talking about Frostborn. And in the last one, I was talking to Mr. Wildfire and his clan because he's a YouTuber for Frostborn. And in this episode, I have a bigger YouTuber for you guys, TK1. And so we are going to be talking about the newest updates, some of the stuff the Frostborn devs have been doing, and what what we like about them, what we don't like about them, and what we think, more importantly, what we think the players like or don't like about those updates. Hey, TK1. Hey. Okay, so I have broken down the last update and everything that's kind of going on with Frostborn into several categories. Obviously, the one that people want to talk about probably the most is the new PvP system and really the fact that we keep our stuff on us now when we die in PvP. Uh, players are probably the most upset, so I'm going to save that for the end or at least close to the end, and let's talk about some of the other topics of this update. Um, uh, are there any topics that you are really personally excited about talking about uh, about this update or about Frostborn right now? Well, yeah, obviously everybody was like really, uh, really uh, shocked by the update from PvP. So, okay, we'll get that for the end. But also the energy uh, was an, a change I didn't expect. So like now we don't have any energy. And uh, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird change because I was really used to the old uh, energy system. It wasn't really bad at all as well. So I don't think anybody like really uh, ran out of energy real quick, only if you really played intensely. But yeah, uh, having no energy now, it's, it's really uh, feels strange. And I don't know, they said it's a uh, temporary change, uh, the same as the PvP changes and stuff. Um, and, and on that note, I don't think, so I think that they say temporary change and basically mm -hmm. what they're saying is, hey, we're experimenting on you guys, which yeah. ultimately they're experimenting on us on everything. But when they say this is a temporary change, they're, they're saying, in my opinion, they're saying, hey, we, we're definitely experimenting. Even more than usual, this is an experiment. Don't get mad at us by making the change or don't get mad at us if we take the change back later. And uh, yeah, I think energy, at first I didn't like it because I have a lot of nostalgic feelings about energy, you know, with Last Day on Earth and kind of managing energy is, is part of mm -hmm. what I think makes me good at the game is, is knowing how to manage my energy, how to use it well. But in the last, you know, few weeks of playing without energy, I've realized yeah, the game does not. The doesn't game, feel the same. Indeed, yeah, it doesn't feel the same, but it it is yeah. it isn't lacking. It 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 sure, still sure. feels. Uh, it still feels like Frostborn uh, in the mm -hmm. sense that, you know, like like I've been doing a ton of farming maple and yeah. uh, copper, and it's obviously very different. But I visit three zones you know, and look for maple or copper, depending on what I'm farming. I'll check all three zones and, you know, if they're, I mean, really quickly, and then I'll go back and I, there's, I didn't ever have to worry about energy. So now I'm, I'm, I'm doing that all the time. Yeah. Never, ever worrying about energy. It's a really interesting. It's mm -hmm. it, I'm just, I'm just worried about how they will bring back the energy because they said it's temporary again. So, it seems like they will return back the energy, but I'm afraid, like, how will they return back the energy? Because if they just turn it back to 200 energy or maybe even 100 energy, people maybe, like, get angry again. Maybe people didn't know this was temporary. So I'm just, yeah, they need to, I think they need to add it back in a creative way. Maybe add some new zones. Maybe that's a little bit uh, much, but I don't know. It's energy now is... It's, it's too good, in my opinion. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't feel... Doesn't feel... Well, I mean, obviously, you can't, you can't make a game too good. I think the concern mm -hmm. you, you might be having, which I also have, is, well, how are they going to monetize the game? If it's not with energy, then are they going to yeah. go charge us for something else? And I don't, I don't like that. I don't think energy is temporary if, if it works well. Like, I don't think they're doing this just to give us a little temporary event. They're, they're experimenting on us, and there is a chance that, that there could never, energy could never be added to the game again, I think. Um, 
the question is, you know, what, how are they going to make money? And like right yeah. now, it looks like they're looking towards marks and stuff, which is one of the things we're going to yeah. talk about. That could be concerning because if they if they're like, well, we're not going to make money off energy, which I think could be smart. It makes people play the game more. But is it going to cost us? Is it going to ruin the game some other way if they're going to monetize it a different way? Because they've already said they're not going to monetize it using skins. The way they are monetizing the game or willing to monetize the game now with those mercenary marks, as you mentioned, I don't think that's the right way of monetizing Frostmark, to be honest, because basically you just press some buttons and you get the materials you paid for. You don't really feel like you, you're playing, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's I don't know. It it it's, it's not the right way of monetizing. Think about it. I agree. I think it it devalues all of the stuff you're getting. I mean, you click on it and you're like, oh man, that's so. It's just it's just yeah. items in your inbox. It crowds your inbox. It doesn't make it feel special. It just kind of fills everything. Um, it doesn't feel like you're playing the game. It doesn't even really give you a good perspective of the game. Like when you, mm -hmm. when I used, you know, on my free to play account, I had some of those marks um, from the um, uh, from the quests. From the quests, yeah, and yeah. and I claimed them and I used the marks and I just thought this isn't even. This isn't even in yeah. touch with what I would get if I actually did that zone. If I did that zone, I would get, it would just look different. And mm -hmm. now I've got a ton of, you know, I've got a huge inbox full of, you know, a bunch of random stuff. Um, yeah. Which, I, I mean, there's some benefit to having stuff in your inbox, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like Frostborn, mm -hmm. like you said. Yeah, and also by adding the the gift to Odin, so you don't even have to like grind for those bones anymore. I mean, if somebody like starts Frostborn and have a lot of money, he can afford pay to win. I mean, he can get awesome classes in the first day and awesome loot in the first day without without even needing to grind or something. That's the, I don't know. That's just yeah. Just I, yeah. I think that. I'm, I mean, they could have done that anyways. Uh, that doesn't really change because back in the day, they would just buy weapon packs and it would give mm. about yeah. 1.2 uh, offering or points at Odin's per coin spent. Uh, and now it's 1.8. So it's, it's a little bit better for them, but, and it's a little bit easier for them. But it hasn't changed the game a whole lot for them to add those those offerings. Uh, they do need to add, I think, a limit to it. I think that that would be um, mm -hmm. because, like you said, if if it's if it's day one of of a new server, and we're getting yeah. slaughtered by someone that has a level, well, they have to level up, but you know, level two, level three class really early on when we're barely, yeah. you know, barely hit that level. Uh, actually, if they do marks, then they could level up to level 99 instantly too. They need to put a yeah, limit mm -hmm. on how fast someone can just be a level 99, you know, level, yeah. a class level three and just start destroying everything just by spending a bunch of money but yeah, if this like stays uh, the same for global release i'm afraid uh, pay to win players will just rule the servers yeah and i'm just really so sure about that yeah so i think they need to reconsider this change to be honest because this is really a pay to win change yeah most of people would agree with me yeah i think uh it is sad that the devs haven't haven't listened to some of our other ways other suggestions on how to monetize the game um, I mean, I personally, I think the instigator set is the perfect way to monetize the game. Yeah, indeed. Uh, yes. that is, I think they need to come up with more ideas like the instigator set. That is the true brilliance of how to monetize mm -hmm. Frostworm. Make it easier for people that spend money, but still make them actually play the game. Same with the level three back. It just like give, it, uh, allows you to play better, like uh better but you still need to play not like now with those mercenary marks you don't even have to play anymore mm -hmm. to to succeed at the game mm -hmm. it's just it's just weird 
Uh, what do you think about the new uh, time limit on the death bag? Oh, the 15, uh, no, it's 10 or 15? 10 minutes, no, 10 minutes and everything minutes. disappears. Oof, that's uh, kind of <laughs> tricky. You know, if you die in a zone and you have some personal uh, items in your bag and somebody is like defending that, you might have, yeah, you might lose. 10 minutes is not very long if you think about it, so. Mm -hmm. mm. But for me, I don't know, it's not really a bothering change, I think, because I never let my bags hang around for more than 10 minutes so yeah for me uh in the zone it makes sense in fact i think that's probably why they did it is so that someone can't you know grab a horseshoe and lock a zone for an hour uh by oh because wow, you, you could just put a horseshoe in your bag and then if someone kills you it's like well now i've locked your zone oh, for damn. an hour um so i like the i like the 10 minutes in zones because you know someone's gonna Someone can guard your bag. Someone can take that stuff. But what happened the other day is I was in Odin's and I had some internet problem. Something happened where it lagged out and I was fighting a sorcerer, which I would have obviously easily won, but it killed me. And, and I still, I it took me, it took me 10 minutes to figure out my internet stuff. And, um, and so normally I keep all of my tokens uh, my pendants in my bag with me, uh, oh. which I'm going to stop doing that now. But if yes. I had, then I would have lost all of my pendants. It just would have vanished um, just because of an of an internet problem. And I was chill. You know, I wasn't, I was playing an Odin's specifically because I had not the best internet. I wasn't go going to do PVP. So mm -hmm. some, to be able to have, uh, I think that they should change the limit back to at least 30 minutes in Odin's uh, and then have yeah. keep the 10 minutes in zones or any type of multiplayer setting. If that's what they were trying to fix, great. But um, in the settings where it's just your family, um, I think it should be still 30 minutes, maybe even an hour. Yeah, um, yeah that's a good suggestion, though. Um, but on that note, they also increased, and I didn't mention this in my Hidden Changes video, um, I don't know if you caught it, they also increased how much damage items in our bag take when you die. Uh, a durability. Oh. Yeah, they increased yeah. it from 15% to 30%. So now, oh, wow. or at least 25%. Yeah, so now when you die all the items in your bag lose no. way more durability what's your thought on that yeah i think it's a good change but yeah as you mentioned i think they should uh, increase the time for like in audience but just keep it like 10 minutes in pvp zones so i was, uh, I was talking PvP. about increasing how much damage durability damage oh. our uh, the items in our bag take from 15 percent to around 25 30 percent oh yeah yeah so i think I don't know why they really did that because I mean 15% was more than enough. I don't know why they increased that. I don't see the point of that to be honest. But uh, since we keep our loot now, I think that's a compensation for uh, I don't know maybe for not losing our stuff anymore. Or is but it just it's, the but loot in our inventory? We already lost 25 uh, to 30% of the stuff on us. I'm talking mm. about it used to be. 25 to 30 percent of the stuff on us would be lost but we would only lose 15 percent of the stuff in our bag whereas now it's 25 30 percent total they made it to where the stuff in our bag loses faster even though that's the stuff that drops so people it's even worse when you and i guess this we're already starting to get into the the conversation about uh how this affects pvp that we keep our stuff yeah. but they made it even worse. So not only did they make it to where you don't get to t take the stuff that on someone's, you know, that they're wearing, but now they made it to where the stuff in their bag that you would get loses even more durability. Oh, wow. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Well, it's uh, even more disappointing, to be honest. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it, oh, my God. To me, it blows my mind. And I'm really <laughs> sad about it because... We have already been telling them, hey, there's a problem with durability. Durability is yeah. getting worse with the new PvP system. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking about when they change the healing system. They may, battles last longer and therefore 
they take a lot more of our durability of both of our weapons and our armor. And so yep. we, we've been telling the devs, please, please, please increase durability. Please make our stuff worth more because right now, you know, I get a weapon and I can already sense myself being a little more disappointed. I'm not as excited about getting a new weapon or getting some new armor because I'm like, well, this will mm -hmm. last, you know, yeah. 15 minutes. It'll last one fight, last two fights, you know, like... I'm going to have a really cool fight, but then there it went. You know, it just makes the game more grindy. I have to get more stuff, more mm -hmm. items to to have fun. And so personally, I think they're connected. Keeping our stuff on us when we die is connected to the durability problem. Because mm -hmm. if there's more durability, we can fight longer, we can have more fights, then it's kind of nice that we keep our stuff. Especially if they have some events that there's going to be more of the point to them than just yeah. you know than, awesome. than just i mean if there's an event where we're like oh yeah i want to win this event or i want to get this certain thing then it's mm -hmm. then it's nice that we keep our stuff on us because then it's not as annoying to have to go back get all new set of armor yeah. we're about it's about the pvp it's about the the fight and so everyone will be happy about this change if that's the case because then we go fight it out then we die we immediately run back to the zone and fight it out again. Exactly. It makes the game more yeah. fun. Um, so yeah. in that way, I like the PvP change. But if we're losing 25% to 30% of our armor, then this change doesn't help us because by the time we finish the fight and die, we're going to lose all of our armor anyways. And so they have to fix that durability problem Otherwise, what they're trying, what I think they're trying to do by even adding this, us keeping our armor, won't really help because we'll still have to go get new armor because it breaks so quickly. Yeah, true. So I guess we're getting into the new the new PvP system, but to me they're very connected to durability. We have been asking increased durability, make things worth more, and then in this update, they have made. Uh, they have made it worse. They made it to where yeah. not only are we losing more durability, but we're not even getting the items from the people that we kill because you know they're they're no longer dropping it. And then yeah. even the stuff they do drop loses more durability. It's just all around the board. There's just nothing to get. <laughs> and the PvP just has no no point anymore. It's just they just like deleted pvp to say it in a harsh way kind of i mean pvp was really a, a big part of the game i mean most youtube channels now uh, covering frostborn just exist most of the time from pvp fights um but now by making those changes i'm really thinking like what now because now if i'm, I'm at the game i'll grind i'll do audience i'll farm and stuff but i did those things to be able to pvp to have some nice fights but now when we did all those grinding, I'm like, what now? So it's really, I don't know. If you just have no point anymore. I agree. If, if, they, if they keep it this way. They just need to add a point. To, so yeah, so so the it sounds like you and I agree that the main problem with this change is that PVP doesn't have a point. Yep, exactly. If they added purpose to PVP, whether they could keep this change if they mm -hmm. want, but as long as they mm -hmm. find a way to add purpose to PvP, then it'd be yeah. worth it. Yeah, a good suggestion by you, for example, was where those events where you won't even care if your enemies drops loose because you're, because you're really aiming for the for the prize in the event. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice, to be honest. Yeah, it'd be. But they they have they have a lot of outcomes they can can go with, to be honest. So yeah, they have they a just lot of. Need to, a lot of ways they can fix it. They just need to pick one and do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. And this is where it kind of goes back into the durability problem to me because uh, if I if I'm gonna grind, well, there's two things. If one, by having low durability and by having our stuff break so quickly, it makes that stuff not as exciting. It makes it to when I look at, I am no longer when I used to get a purple set of armor. It was like. It was yeah. just, it would just create such happy feelings in me. But now it's just cheap. 
I'm like, this thing's going to break in two fights. And, yeah. and I, and especially if I fight with an illusionist, then it's going to break in one fight because that illusionist yeah. is going to shred everything I have. And so it just, I, it makes it cheaper, which I don't like. And so I think they need to increase. Honestly, I think they need to triple the durability or they need to balance like, for example, like the illusionist needs to do less damage to your durability. Um, mm -hmm. But the other thing that they that that I think the devs are maybe they already know this, but they haven't clued us into this is that if they if they added PVP events, like if they had an arena, then we would go through a lot more durability. If they added an arena, then and maybe like with a leaderboard or maybe there was some really cool loot that you could get in the arena then we would go and do a ton of PVP. And even if they reduced it back down to 15% of how much durability we lose when we die, which maybe that's the way to fix the durability problem. You just lower how much we lose when we die. Um, but if they did that, then we would go back and we would die over and over and over again. Because right now, when I do a PVP episode on my channel, it's like almost two hours of footage to get those like four fights. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so hard unless I'm coordinating with people. I can't get that many PVP fights. And so I want to do more PVP fights. PVP is kind of like, in my opinion, it's kind of like gambling. It's like, we know that it is not lucrative to do PVP. Even those of us that are really good at PVP, there's no way to be good yeah. enough to get enough gear to compensate for the fact that they're losing 25% when they die and you're losing 25% when you die. You yeah, would, it's just insane. <laughs> you would have to you would have to kill 5 times as many purple geared players. And this is back when you would this is back when you would get the gear from them. Even when you got the gear, you'd have to kill five times as many of them as you did died of purple gear, not just killing five times as many people. Of those mm -hmm. people just to make any type of profit. And now when they keep the gear, there's no way to make a profit. There's no way. But we would yeah. still love to do it because it's fun. And that's how I think Frostborn should make their money because they'll make a good, if they made a good game, if, if they made a good balanced game to where everyone that did some farming, did Odin, did other stuff, got to do a decent amount of PVP. The people that were PVP gluttons, people that really wanted to get that leaderboard, the people that really wanted to do those things, they would just buy. They would maybe do some grinding, but they would do, a ton of buying so they could just yeah, stay in that true. arena constantly. They would Indeed, yeah. never leave. We, we, we would be like, oh yeah, that person is always in the arena constantly. We, <laughs> they're always there. They just buy whatever they need to stay in there. And that's where it, they could make a ton of, that's where Frostburn can make their money. They don't have to lower our durability. They don't have to make it harder for us. To, they don't have to make the game more grindy. They just make the game they just give us a PVP outlet and then the game mm -hmm. will instantly have so much more. Uh, we'll, we'll be using all of our resources on PVP and then there, there you go. That's how you create mm -hmm. an unlimited threshold of, of monetization is if you want to keep doing more PVP, then, then you're going to have to, either keep grinding or or keep paying yeah, exactly and i really think pvp just represents the activeness of the game because you really can see now since the last update when they let's say remove pvp uh, the game just really went uh really inactive the newheim uh, town for example if you would go there now you will see like nobody like when pvp back then was still a thing the game was really active the game really just how do you say this just it existed of grind to pvp so that was really yeah as you said an outlet just 
to it just the the biggest part of the game and i think really yeah people would really pay to win just to be able to win battles or win an, an event or something just to win a prize but but by deleting uh, let's not say delete but by by giving pvp less points and adding pay to win changes i'm not sure if that's the right way of monetizing frostborn to be honest yeah i agree okay last uh last question um and this isn't necessarily have to do with this most recent update but you know obviously we talked about this a little bit and we're connected what is your opinion on uh classes right now uh i don't know if you guys saw or i don't know if you watched my hidden changes video but i um i made the point i think it was a hidden changes video uh at one point i saw um where the dev said you know if you are even medium activity you should have oh, you yeah, know yeah, multiple uh level three classes unlocked by now uh, what is your opinion that blew me away what is your opinion yeah. on on that the dev saying that I saw a video of you and you had a point there yeah they if they think like every player with medium activity have level three classes they're really not in touch with the community I think because me I play like a lot of Frostborn and I have one level three class the Berserk tree that's all I, d I never got to another level three class and even that one I had to pay to win some weapons to, to be able to get the one so yeah level three classes i don't think like everybody is gonna have those so you're a but, very you're a very active player and you spent yes. money and you yes. were just only able to get the berserk three indeed yep. and they said a medium level of activity should have multiple level three so that that's pretty crazy <laughs> indeed uh, okay but that, uh <laughs> go ahead the concept of classes itself uh, I really like that, to be honest, when uh, every member of a family is a certain class with uh, certain gadgets, because now, like, you can use one potion every 15 seconds. It really, like, uh, tells you to have it as a quick slot, as uh, mentioned in the last podcast with uh, Mr. Five, Mr. Ryfire. Um, but so, yeah, the concept of classes itself is really nice. Uh, I really think that's nice. Um, but now, now it doesn't make sense anymore with those... Uh, keeping loot system and stuff um i just i just don't feel pvp or playing anymore uh, because there's no pvp so yeah. i think the previous version where everybody just pvp'd and lost uh because i don't even care if i lose a fight i just do it for fun mm -hmm. and here and there i might lose a fight uh it's like having the feeling of winning and getting getting his potions and gadgets and stuff and armor. It's just just a good so good feeling. It really motivates you to grind and play more. Mm -hmm. um, Great, yeah, and I, I agree. I think that the the class system does it having that. Now, what do you think about uh, the having the classes uh, attached to each other, like the warrior line or the scoundrel line or the archer oh, yeah. line? Do you think that they should be separated so that, you know, someone mm -hmm. can be like a, a pathfinder berserker or a, you know, an illusionist rogue or, you know, or do you like the fact that um, someone is kind of choosing that, that whole path, the warrior path or the. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, to be honest, when you have like you would you really can like choose where you're going for, uh, for example, like you say, uh, you have for every class a row so you don't have to spend uh points or i mean just uh grind for the classes you won't even use because for example the warrior row now when you, where you have a uh, trasher and berserk protector for example i never use trasher because i don't i just don't think it's good for pvp it might just be my uh just my opinion but still i spent all the points and all all the grind for a class i won't even ever use so I think it's it's better, yeah, if you have uh, for every row a certain class for then you can upgrade it like uh, treasure one, treasure two, treasure three. That will be much better, yeah. Yeah, and I think it also it'll create more. One of the things that I like about it is that it'll create more uniqueness. For example, I think the Thrasher is good for PvP for a certain play style. Um, someone who has you know a team that's very mobile, a lot of damage. 
the and yeah. a and a warrior who's like, yeah, we're gonna ambush people, and I'm gonna I'm gonna initiate. You just follow me. A, a, pl- a person that plays like that, and I know a lot of really good League of Legends players that play like that, they're gonna love the Thrasher to be able to run in and jump in, and but oh, yeah. so that's, pretty good, yeah. but that is a very different play style than than the Protector or definitely than the pr- Berserk, and so to have people pick a class based on their play style and say, oh yeah, I'm I am not I'm not choosing the Warrior. I'm choosing Thrasher because that is my playstyle. Then, then you're gonna, someone's gonna say, "Yeah, I'm a Thrasher three, and people are immediately know, "Oh, this guy like I already know stuff about his playstyle. I already know a lot about um, what this guy values. What this guy, I don't, I'll know if he's good for my team because he's a Thrasher. So that's the kind of that's the kind of warrior we're looking for. Whereas if someone says I'm Thrasher three right now. They're like, okay, well, you're pay to win. Uh, you're a warrior, but I don't know if you like Thrasher three, or if you like Protector three, or if you're a Berserk three. I don't know anything about your playstyle. I just know that you have Berserk three, Protector three, and Thrasher three unlocked. And that's why you're saying you're a Thrasher three. But I don't know anything about you as a player. I don't know if you're a good fit for our family. Whereas. If you divide them and someone says, I'm Protector 3 or I'm Berserk 3 or I'm Thrasher 3, then all of a sudden they are telling you something about their play style, something about um, what they value. You learn so much more about that person. And especially if someone says, oh, yeah, I'm a Thrasher 3 and I'm a, uh, let's say, Rogue 3 immediately you know okay rogue three is their pve class and that's what their kind of style is for pve and thrasher is their pvp class and now i understand that you all of a sudden all they did instead is the two classes they specialize and and now you know a ton about that person you know about how they play and what they value also and i want to know your opinion on this my opinion is that if you separate them, it'll motivate people more to, you know, to go for that next class. Uh, for example, in your case, if you had gone for Berserk Three, which yeah. is Berserk Three your favorite out of Berser- Berserk Protector no, and no. Thrasher? It's totally not. I really wanted to go for Protector Three because that was okay. my original class. But the thing is, I Berserk Three. I need first to complete Thrasher Three, mm-hmm. but I don't need that class. <laughs> So, okay, so I don't have the motivation to go for protector two. You lost motivation. Okay, this is perfect. So you lost the motivation to get the class you wanted because you had to put so much time into a class you didn't. If you, yeah. here's my question: if if they had separated, and you would have gotten protector two because you would have gotten that already, and you would have even had four thousand points left over because you wouldn't have had to get berserk two or thrasher two. Right now, you would be protector two or Protector 3, everything you wanted, and you would have 4,000 more points for the same amount of work, would you be motivated to pick another class and start working towards it? For sure, for sure. Because you already succeeded, and and you got exactly what you wanted. Right now, you just worked mm-hmm. hard, and you didn't even get what you wanted. Uh, imagine how much more motivated you would be if you had worked less hard and got exactly what you wanted, and then you could pick from any of the other classes to work on next. You don't have to grind for anything you don't want. What would be your next class after Protector 2? What would you choose for your second class? Probably the Sharpshooter because yeah, I've, uh, I've experienced that's a very good class because I play Berserk and it counters Sharpshooter, counters Berserk. Maybe that's why. But uh, that's pretty uh, a pretty good class as well. So I might, yeah, I, I definitely would be more motivated to go for Sharpshooter Three, maybe even spend more money on it, because you really have the feeling of completing a row, completing uh, the getting the level three class. That really would feel much better than now. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Everything would it would feel you'd feel that sense of accomplishment. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel the same way, uh, based on. Obviously, I don't, you know, I don't know 100%, but, you know, I never know anything 100%. But 
based on you know being a gamer knowing gamers i just think if the devs want to make money in the class system which i think then that's what they need to do they need to separate them because if they separate them then that's going to make it to where free-to-play players are happier uh and then even those of us who spend money we're exactly. going we're going to be like oh man i'm a protector three i got what i wanted i love it but now i'm really curious about this other guy uh he's got sharpshooter three it's really good class i kind of want that now and so i'm going to start working towards that but it just allows us to focus on what we want and be having to grind for stuff we don't want is just such a demotivator yeah. and Indeed. I just think the de- that was one of the biggest mistakes the devs have made, in my opinion. Uh, I think mm-hmm. they did it because they're like, oh, it makes certain classes more valuable. But I think it has yeah. actually created a much... Um, I, I think it just demotivates people. I think that could be one of the biggest helps that they could do is if they change that. Yeah, they really should, though. They really can change it drastically now because it's still a beta game. But once it hits global, it will be more difficult. So if there's something we should suggest developers, it's probably this change, yeah. Okay. Well thanks for thanks for talking. I'm hoping to keep doing this, you know, every week or so, pick a different YouTuber. Uh, especially once global comes out, uh, we'll definitely do this again. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thanks for the talk. All right, guys. Well, that was TK1. He is an awesome YouTuber. Go check out his channel. I put a link uh, there and also in the pinned comment. Uh, He has been covering Frostborne uh, since the beginning, or pretty much since the beginning. He's an awesome guy, uh, great PvPer, and really he loves the community. He does a lot of tournaments between different people, and he's a great guy to check out. Make sure to check him out. Also, if you liked what TK1 and I said in this video, make sure to put it in the comment and share it with the devs on their Discord channel. I've put a link to their Discord channel as well. The devs need to know what you guys are wanting. The game is not globally released yet, so there's a lot of chance for us to make some pretty big changes. There's a lot of chance for them to change a lot of aspects of this game. And if they make those changes, then it's gonna make Frostborn a much better game. All right, guys, see you next time.